Hey, Flatzoid made a community post today in which he linked a video that claims to have made an observation of some islands over a distance of 100 to 200 miles. So, is this claim correct? Let's see. The original video contains little identifying information except a mention of US Virgin Islands, St. John and seeing St. Kitts and Guadalupe in the description of the video. But fortunately, later in the comments, the author mentioned that he took the same video with a theodolite, actually a theodolite app. So let's take a look at that. This one does a little better with regards to the presented information. We can see the observer's latitude and longitude and his elevation here, as well as his heading. And we can see that he's uh, looking roughly south. So let's see what this looks like on a map. We can see that the position is indeed on St. On St. John in US Virgin Islands, but it doesn't really make sense for him to see St. Kitts and Guadalupe, which are to the east of his position, rough, roughly here. But uh, it would make sense, if he was looking south, for him to have seen the, U the other part of the US Virgin Islands. So let's see how far that is from him. Well, that is roughly 66 kilometers. So, yep, it sounds like it could be visible. But to make sure, let's do a simulation. For analyzing the views, his first video is actually much better than his second one because he used a camera with a better magnification there. In his second video, I believe he just, he just used a phone camera. And in the first one, it's probably some kind of an icon. And as we can see, we can clearly see some land here. I took a few frames out of the video and stitched them together to get a larger panorama because he was panning quite a lot and we have another piece of land here as well as two small pieces of land here. Why that's important it will become uh, clear in a while, because he was apparently under the impression that these pieces of land are, qu are quite far away from him, but we will see if that is the case in a moment. Anyway, in case you're wondering if I stitched the frames together correctly, uh, please look at first at the land, because that was the first thing I looked at, but here Actually, in this space, there was no land for a while, so then I, I looked at the clouds and I tried to make the clouds fit. So then, if I take some layer and I try to make it opaque, we can see that the clouds here fit together nicely, and here as well. And in case you're wondering about the land, we can take a look here, as we can see the land fits in both frames as well as here. So you can barely see that I'm changing the, the opacity actually. And as you can also see I, I rotated all of this a bit because uh, his camera was at an angle so now the horizon line is horizontal in the image. Okay, so let's look at the simulation. Here is the config file I, I used. You can see that I input his latitude and longitude. They are slightly different from the one in, in his video because his position in that video was most, more to the north of the tip of the land where he was standing. And if he was looking south, if I did a simulation from the northern point, we would just see only this, uh, only this peninsula he was standing on. So if we want to actually see the sea to the south, we need to move him to the southern shore. So that's what I did. Uh, you can check on the map where, the, where those coordinates point. And his altitude I set to 17 meters. It was roughly 50 feet in this video and 50 feet is roughly 16, 17 meters. So that's what I set it to. Direction where he is looking 180 is southern. And I set his field of view to 60 degrees because w with all this panning that he did, he looked quite far, uh, quite in quite a wide field. Okay, and the maximum distance for the simulation is 500 kilometers to accommodate his claim that he saw for 200 miles in case that's even possible, but as we'll see, we don't even need that much. So the first simulation will be on a spherical Earth with the, uh, with the typical radius and the width of the image, 8000 uh, pixels. It's pretty much just to show as much detail as possible. So let's see what the result is. This is the result. 
In order for it to fit the scale of the images from his video, I had to actually scale it up to 27,000 pixels wide, 27,500 in fact. So it's a bit large, uh, but as we can see, we can quite clearly see uh, the details that are important. And if I decrease the opacity of the simulation, we can see that the shape of the terrain actually matches what he saw quite nicely. And the interesting bit is that what I used in the simulation was uh, the globe Earth with a standard atmosphere. And we can see that with a standard atmosphere, he would actually be seeing more than what he saw on that day. So he saw even less than he would than he was supposed to see on a globe. So that's, uh, that's quite interesting to me. But it's quite clear why it was that way, because if we zoom in, it's clear that there was a mirage on that day. So if I knew the proper atmospheric conditions, I could try to simulate the mirage and uh, and see if if this matches, if this matches the simulation. But it's quite hard to come by, uh, come by such data. But yeah, so let's take a look more to the left. We see that this part of land here is actually some other mountains from the same island. There is a connection here that he is simply not seeing because the water is in the way or a mirage. And then if we go further to the left, there are some pieces of land that might have been visible, but due to the, the conditions on that day, nothing is visible. And if we move further, this corresponds to the last piece of last pieces of land that he was seeing. And as we can see, this piece here is, is just this. And these two small pieces are just the very, very tops of some mountains on this other piece. But let's see where all of this actually is. Alright, so we have the observer's position on the map here. Let's zoom out a bit. And let's see what we are actually seeing in this simulation. So these were the mountains that he was seeing uh, in, the, in the right of the panorama that I stitched together. So let's take a look for example at this part and we can see the coordinates here they are 17.761503 and minus 64.8811 so let's enter that and we can see that it's a place on this island to the south not surprisingly it's some kind let's turn the terrain on so it's a mountain that is above 300 meters high, so above 1000 feet for uh, for the Imperial units users. And as we can see, the point I chose is actually at an elevation of 1,131 uh, feet or 343 meters. So if you look further to the left, like uh, like here, for example, let's enter the coordinates. We have them here again. And we can see that it's again a mountain on the same island. Okay, so let's scroll to the left and try this part on the far left in the panorama from his video. So let's take a look here and let's enter the coordinates once again. By the way, we can also see the distance to the, those terrain features from the observer and it's 66.5 kilometers in the simulation at least, but we can see what this corresponds to on the map. And once again, it's the same island, another mountain, 200 meters, well, something above 200 meters tall, and we can see 235 meters, and those two very tips here on the, on the left. Let's check the coordinates of those. Okay, another peak on the same island, and the last one, which would be somewhere here, let's check the coordinates. And it's another peak on the same island. So, as we can see, uh, the author of those videos wasn't seeing St. Kitts or Guadalupe. What he was seeing was an island that is a part of the US Virgin Islands which was only roughly 
not not quite 70 kilometers from him which isn't that great of a distance and it's actually quite expected that land is sometimes visible from such distances it seems like we have another case of a marco b here and for some final words i couldn't leave you without showing you what this would look like on a flat earth so let's see the simulation for those two islands on the right well, two islands, it's the same island really. And we can see that if the earth was flat, there is much, much more land to be seen below. And if we scroll to the left, to those pieces of land here, we can see that there is also a lot more to be seen if the earth was flat, but it's not. And all of this is obscured by the water. And actually, if we take a look, if the earth was flat, we would see the land all across the panorama because it's all on a single island. So thank you all for watching and see you in the next one.